Welcome to the Lakeview Healthcare Podcast Series. I'm Dr. Drew Edwards with Lakeview Health, and with me is Dr. Michael Herkoff, who's currently a professor at the University of Florida in the Department of Psychology. Dr. Herkoff also maintains a private practice and is a mental health consultant to the Florida Board of Bar Examiners and to the Physicians Referral Network, Professionals Referral Network, and a consultant to the Florida Board of Psychology. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Herkoff. Sure, happy to be here. In listening to your, uh, your excellent uh, presentation today, I was thinking about two things. One, uh, you did a great job of explaining the effects of various mood-altering substances on the brain, particularly the brain of teenagers, and then the short and long-term <laughs> effects as measured by um, some of the testing that you've been doing forever. Um, Having said that, what are your concerns about what you see in the culture now and the kind of drugs people are doing, the age of onset, and what are the things that are worrying you as a, uh, as a neuropsychologist? Sure. Um, I think there's a couple of things. The, the first issue is that all drugs of abuse uh, maintain their effects by activating a pleasure center uh, in, in the brain through the release of various neurotransmitters. But it's much more significant than that. Not only does it do that, but it fundamentally changes the way that our develop, that, that our brain develops. There are a number of pathways that, that take place in the brain in which the brain learns how to deal with the environment. Um, when a person uses drugs or alcohol, especially drugs, um, their brain reorients so that the importance or the salience of the drug or obtaining that drug becomes paramount to them. Unfortunately, um, it has its most devastating impacts on the development of the adolescent brain. Um, uh, the adolescent brain develops, uh, or our brain develops from the back to the front, and it's probably not fully developed until about our mid-20s. Hmm. This period of, of early teenage years um, is a crucial time for, for brain development. And if that brain is altered by the presence of, of drugs, uh, of abuse, it fundamentally changes the trajectory of, of how that brain develops. And so that long after the person might decide to start use, to stop using the drugs, those pathways, um, that learning that's taken place remains, mm -hmm. which leads to things like, like relapse. The other downside is, is that there's data emerging that this adolescent brain that is affected to drugs can be fundamentally changed and damaged to a uh, level that it may not recover fully even after months, years, and in some cases perhaps forever from the, from the drug use. It's impossible to know who that will happen to sure. and who it won't happen to. My most significant concern is sort of the fundamental change that we're having in society now about our attitudes uh, towards mm. drugs. Um, as I said today, any drug that's introduced by a pharmaceutical company is considered to be dangerous and has to be proven to be safe. And so a pharmaceutical company will spend decades and millions of dollars proving that. With drugs of abuse, it's the opposite. They're considered to be safe until we prove that they are, in fact, dangerous. And the data is pretty clear that the more permissive or the more accepting that a society is regarding drug use, the more use you will see in the population. And the more use you see in the population, the more addicts that you will see develop. And the, the more use you see in the population and the more accepted it is by the population, the younger the person will be, start using the drug. And, and there's good data to talk now that um, drug use among 17 uh, to 12 year olds is actually on an increase mm -hmm. in states where we have developed a more permissive use um, towards a legalization of a drug such as marijuana. So mm -hmm. we are setting ourselves up for what I think is a catastrophic um, end result uh, in the next decade or two. You, you made the point, which was excellent, that in the developing brain, the prefrontal cortex and the, in, in that area is really the breaks on the hedonic midbrain. So those urges and impulses that we all have all, and we share with, I guess animals have the same structures in the midbrain. But as the prefrontal area doesn't develop, it seems that the hedonic brain then, it, it is the behavioral changes or the loss of behavioral control that's just so disruptive in society and in the work that, that we've done. Um, 
Talk about loss of behavioral control for a minute, both in the, in the adolescent, which is a big concern, and in the long-term addict. Sure. Well, as you, as you mentioned, the, the prefrontal cortex, in fact, does serve, serve as that. It, it helps us pay attention to things. It helps us uh, both to engage in behavior, but also to inhibit behavior. And um, inhibiting behavior is, is very important in terms of development and success in society. We all have to be able to put off certain things uh, to be able to establish uh, certain goals, the delay of gratification. Um, the, the drugs and abuse come in and they hijack the brain, not only the, the reward center that we talked about, but the release of these neurotransmitter impairs these neurons' ability to, to put on those, those brains, mm -hmm. for the adolescent to focus on what, what they need to focus on. And so their capacity to make the right decision at the right time to engage in behaviors, not only to eliminate the drug use, but also to engage in pro-social um, behaviors that are in their self-interest, in fact, uh, mm -hmm. decrease. And, and the problem is, is that once those pathways are, are set up, they are very difficult uh, to change and simply do not change by the taking away of, of the drug. So long after the person stops, those deficits uh, continue. Wow. It's uh, with the cultural changing and the, as you said, the liberalization of uh, attitudes certainly show us the perceptions of harm are inversely correlated with the amount of abuse and the prevalence of abuse. Uh, we could talk for hours, but we don't have hours. So thanks for coming today. Your lecture and, and information was very valuable and everyone appreciated it. Uh, for those of you who are interested in learning more about addiction uh, and Lakeview Healthcare, you can visit us at lakeviewhealth.com or you can call and reach us 24 seven at 888-480-3799. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dr. Drew Evers with Lakeview Healthcare.